hidden away on the front lines of eastern Ukraine is a potentially deadly force. Volunteer fighters who saved the nation from invaders remain armed and dangerous, and could always turn their weapons on their own government. То есть объясни ему, что сейчас мы герои красавцы, а завтра мы приказом президента станем террористами. So what would you do if the government declared you a terrorist and made you a criminal? Ну уже были попытки просто на самом деле там захватить нашу базу. Ну у них не получилось. Ну займем круговую оборону, а там посмотрим, насколько их хватит. a little bit like powder. Yeah, it does. Yeah. They've been shelling this, this piece of road, yeah. The war has been dragging on here for years. Ukrainian armed forces are locked in a stalemate with Russian-backed separatists, and civilians are left to pick up the pieces. When it all started in 2014, Ukraine's military was totally unprepared. We're heading to meet the guy who back then took charge and urged anyone, regardless of their past or motive, to get to the front and fight. Another checkpoint? Yeah, we should stop filming somewhere here. Camera down. I've followed the conflict in Ukraine for a while. Obviously, you're a very powerful guy. I heard you have a sniper rifle in your office. You're about to chew. Whoops. <laughs> Turchinov is a controversial guy. In 2014, he stepped in as Ukraine's acting president. At the time, anti-government protesters were in open revolt. Neighboring Russia moved in and took over Crimea, and then began arming separatists in eastern Ukraine. До наших північних і східних кордонів російські війська. Ситуація була просто драматична. So there's two wars and no, basically no army. І тоді я змушений був звернутися до українських патріотів і попросити їх іти добровільно захищати Україну. За це вони віддавали своє кров і життя. It's on the record that some of these guys that were fighting were criminals, neo-Nazis, fascists. Але дехто з них дійсно показав себе з негативної сторони. Але це були одиниці. So you don't regret that decision at all. Коли б ситуація повторилася, я б діяв би так само. Тому що головна моя задача була захистити країну. І ми виконали це завдання. Are they still there? Are they still actually undertaking serious operations? Саме збройні сили сьогодні повністю несуть відповідальність за захист України. You're sure the volunteers, you know, they're just doing assistance now. Безумовно. І ще ж кажу, між Україною і Росією саме відповідають наші військові керівники. Tuchinov's sticking to the script. To secure Western military aid, Ukraine must show that proper command and control are firmly in place. As if to prove Ukraine's military might to us, they roll up the big guns. It's just like bringing out the show horse, except it's a live tank. Oh, sick. It's an impressive show but most of these top-of-the-line tanks are for the export market, not the front lines of eastern Ukraine. It doesn't quite add up. It makes us question the party line that there aren't any rogue volunteers out there still fighting, unwilling to hand over their weapons to their own government. We have to sneak in because the Ukrainian military that set up all these checkpoints to kind of bet who goes in and out is not really keen on us covering the battalions. Yeah, he needs the passport. So we're gonna follow him in? Yeah. Perfect. It's like an apocalyptic movie set. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, guys, here we are. Ah, that's what we know what it says. The scientists, we are not here. The scientists, we're not here. We are not here. <laughs> that. Jesus. We got through a military checkpoint as volunteers helping the military. We're here kind of completely clandestinely. Yeah, 
wouldn't fuck with these guys. Everyone keeps talking about snipers, so let's go hang out with snipers. So this used to be an orphanage, and this is the pool for the kids. Clearly, it's not that anymore. It's an extra set piece from The Walking Dead, I think. And the cats are stressed out. Let's move. Let's go. Is this basically your home? Yes. It's our home. It's our home. Well, it's cozy, that's for sure. No windows. The more you live with pesk, the more you live and the more. What were you before the war? We lived a civil life, like all people normal people. What do you like about the war right now? What do you like about what you're doing? Well, I'll tell you, war is really bad. But you have to do it. And you have to love this job. Because if you don't love this job, and many people who come here to come here to live a civil life, they don't look at it as they looked at it. It's blood and land. It's actually changed everything. I mean, you got an AK, AK bullets, you got some tea, dogs. What more do you need? Свободы надо. It's cool to see how these guys live, but I really want to see if they're actually fighting. Are they just out here playing soldier, or do they have a crucial combat role? Despite what the government's told me. Ну да, нехай одеваются полную полярку и все. This is Thunder. He's taking us to another position. I gotta say, I like his, uh, I like his bandana. Looks like a proper Cossack warrior. По великому рахунку вже нічого нема. Тут если даже ну коли вернеться мирне життя, тут просто надо це все згортати. Ніч нема що відбудовувати. Why are you called Thunder? Ні. Це побратими дали такий позивний, коли я сюди приїхав. Мене не видно, але мене чути. Did you ever think that you were going to be in a place like this, fighting in a war? Що ж якісь двіжі можуть бути зараз? Майами, Майами. Thunder seems like a take-charge kind of guy. If these volunteers are actually fighting, he'll be in the middle of the action. Sniper? Sniper, yes. <laughs> Although this isn't going to protect me from a sniper round. I want to see some of the fighting myself, because if I'm going to tell this story back home, I have to show what's happening to you personally. Якщо ви вечором будете на позиції, якщо дозволить командування бути на позиції, то я думаю, що ви будете мати шанс побачити якусь перестріл. Кожного дня є загроза, що вони можуть відкрити вогонь першими по нас. Thunder seems eager to go, but it is keen to show me something. Special stash. SPG, F1, F1, RPG-22. Коли вже дуже треба бути злим, а нема чим. Сорі. Да, Дізель? Да. Все-все біля мене, да, все під контролем. Давай. Командир. Переживає, куди ви пропали. The commander seems a bit twitchy. We'll need to sort it out if we're going to stay. Already hearing artillery, but we just heard one that was really close. All right, let's go. Let's get out of here. Oh, fuck. That's an artillery. That's Jesus. Holy fuck. That's a heavy gun. Obviously, some shelling and some fighting started already. I can tell everyone kind of got a little jumpy, but I think they've got an artillery cannon here. Miami, Michigan. Miami, Miami. We finally scored a meeting with the commanders. So we will talk to Diesel right now. Cool. Hopefully they'll let us stay the night. 
The uh, the girl has a lot more clothes on than most of the military <laughs> barracks I've been to where they have pinups. I don't know that says officer say. Это не приехали же был. Ah, funny. <laughs> I kind of completely get why you guys are volunteering to fight this enemy to save your nation and your people. But why did you both join the volunteer army and not the regular military? Більше підходить сама ця структура революційна, радикальна, чим звичайна армія. Ну тут все дуже просто. У нас ми трошки інші. So what would you guys do if the volunteer military had to be folded into the regular military? Ми просто свідомо не йдемо в ту систему, яка заведомо нас нас буде з'їдати. Нічого хорошого не вийде звідти. And would you say that you're both willing to die for for this cause? Ну за три з половиною роки війни вже якось цим питанням вже не стоїть, готовий чи не готовий, вже твердо знаєш, що, ну yeah, cool. We are. We can stay tonight. Nice. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. Now we're doing what every soldier does in every war: sit around and wait. That's, that's some pretty heavy guns. Soundtrack of Ukraine has begun already. Hello. Oh, whoa. Ladiola's party. You hear that? That's a sniff. Holy shit, that was close. Good. No way. Watch out, you're a slouchy kid. You did it. Watch out. That's the thing about this war. It's no longer this raging hormonal teenager. It's now this jaded adult. And it just keeps on going and going. Over 10,000 dead. Almost 2 million displaced with no end in sight. We've heard about another position held by a different group of volunteers. So we head north of the contact line. This is a pretty like advanced position, right? It's almost on the front, really close. So we have another checkpoint here. Yeah. Yeah, we're <clears throat> There used to be heavy fighting here, but it's been pretty quiet lately. The volunteers show no sign of leaving, though, drawn to stay with their legendary leader, Santa. Yeah, yeah. Hello, Santa. I like your dacha. <laughs> Obviously, you've, you've got this kind of fearsome reputation, a little bit of a... A Ukrainian folklore hero. Тут трошки інші подарунки приносяться, вот і нічемним дітям, а а дебілам. And how long have you been fighting in this war? То вот уже три роки буде. So why did you choose to join a volunteer brigade rather than joining the actual Ukrainian military? Ну як відбати от своє життя і життя своїх побратимів? в руки комусь, хто, можливо, не настільки підготовлений, скажімо так, м'яко. 
Тобто... Я коли вперше потрапив на війну, я думав, що обісруся з переляку. Якщо ти взагалі нічого не боїшся, ти або ідіот, або, або через день мертвий. Це дуже важливо для тебе. Момент. Я сигарету візьму, бо я коли довго не курю, починаю паніка у мене починається. How would you describe yourself politically? Anarchist. Anarchist. Anarchia, my parent. <laughs> so do you think in some ways you're almost better off that you've experienced this war? I don't even know if it's better or better, but there's a lot of change. It's very strong. It must be difficult to lose people here on the front. Do you feel like you're almost a little bit responsible for that? This is where the grave is, in the Muslim. Where's Shaman? Shaman. Shaman. How many, how many of your guys have you lost? Так багато. У нас же постійно тут накривають. Так не діваєш. Це все. Кожне, кожне людське життя воно велика втрата. Do you think when regular life comes back, you'll be okay? Та ні, Боже з Богом. That definitely makes me think about things. They don't know what they're gonna do after this. They haven't thought about it. Nobody has an answer about what happens after. Just a few hours' drive from the front is Ukraine's capital, Kiev. It's a bit strange being back here. It kind of just feels like life goes on as normal. At Ukraine's National War Museum, it's business as usual. But they've got a new exhibit about the ongoing war in the East. I've been there. Of Yeah. From Zona. From Zona. Lots of bang, 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 bang. Action. 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 Yeah. It's definitely weird being in a museum with an exhibition on a war that you were just in and advertising the exact location where you definitely saw actual fighting. It's, it's almost as if people are celebrating it like it's over, but it's not. The war in the East already feels like a distant memory to some, but the battle is far from over especially for volunteers recently returned from the front. We've tracked down a couple of these guys just outside the city who've invited us over for a hang. Barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> These guys are clearly enjoying a break from the front, trying to take the edge off. Okay, okay. Andrew, what is it? I wanted to cut the hair. No, what? We cut the hair. We're healthy. We're healthy. We're healthy. We're healthy. So some people say that the volunteer battalions have done damage and are villains and not heroes. What do you say to people that think it's a negative thing? Who says it? I haven't heard this as like a thing where everyone thinks this. It's just it's one of the criticisms I've heard about it. Ah, no, no, no. Every one has the right to have their own opinion, and every one has their own opinion. He speaks, and we, we, as soldiers, we are absolutely on their side, on their point of view. We do all their own work. Look, I'm growing up with a child, and I'm asking my dad, Dad, what did you do when there was a war? What do I tell him? What do I tell him? I defended my country. Тебе, дружину, маму твою. Ну, це, це чоловіча робота. Все. After more food and even more drinks, things get pretty real, pretty fast. Oh! That's gonna hurt the ears a little bit. 
You want me to try? Safety off. Interesting dudes, clearly nationalists. They also said, fuck the police. Fuck the government, burn it down. Makes me wonder about what a bunch of young guys who have been fighting a war are gonna do when it's over. Or whether they're ever going to be okay with that. It's the annual day of the Defender, and the police are on high alert. The event is meant to mark Ukraine's recent resistance to Russian aggression. But it's become a rallying point for people who celebrate violent struggle and love defying authority. People like the volunteers. So on this glorious day of the Defender in Ukraine, I'm seeing a lot of volunteer battalion flags and patches. I'm also seeing a lot of, a lot of uh, angry yelling dudes in black masks and various forms of baklava. What could go wrong? hard to know how this will all play out. But one thing is certain, the volunteers are still out there and don't seem to be going away anytime soon.